What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Nail That Tone, a series that's all about helping you guys achieve some of the most legendary tones of all time. In this episode we're talking about Van Halen's guitar tone from his first album. There's a lot of cool stuff to talk about, so let's get into it. So in this episode we're talking about Van Halen 1, an absolutely legendary album from 1978 and it's super highly influential and has influenced many guitar players including myself. And it definitely has that really classic crank plexi sound, which is uh, definitely one of my favorite sounds of all time. So the first thing we're talking about is finger tone. So for this week's episode, I really wanted to highlight Eddie Van Halen's use of open strings and kind of also talk about the kind of small things that add to Eddie's playing style. It's difficult to think about Eddie Van Halen's guitar playing and his guitar tone without thinking about all the dive bombs, the, the pick scrapes, the tapping, all these kind of creative techniques that Van Halen helped innovate. So for this solo, even though it's a very short solo, uh, there's still a lot of cool things that I like to highlight, like leaving that high E to ring out, so it kind of makes the melody just stand out a lot more and gives you that like crunchy, kind of cool lead sound. There's also the flat fifth interval, which he kind of slides in between towards the end of the solo, which is cool. And there's also that classic dive bomb at the end, which is totally Van Halen and something that we kind of take for granted now, as many guitar players do that all the time, but at the time it was definitely innovative and definitely something that was kind of unique to Eddie's style. So now we're talking about what was used on the actual album. So the bulk of my research really consists of checking out a cool exhibit that I'm pretty sure is open to the public now. I don't know if it's affected by the whole coronavirus thing, but it was opened a few years ago and it really features his early 70s rig which kind of consists of his guitar, his amps, his pedals and it's essentially a recreation of his early rig that he used on the first two albums. So there's a lot of cool stuff in this exhibit and Eddie himself actually donated some of his stuff that he actually used. So that exhibit actually has some of the stuff that is in his collection and some of the stuff he actually used during the time. So when it comes to the guitar he was using his boogie body Frankenstrat which had a I guess essentially a super strap body and he carved out a little area so he could add the Gibson humbucker and it was just a really a, a strat that he kind of built out of just different parts that he felt uh, fit his needs as a guitar player. Now the exhibit does clearly state that he was using late 60 model 1959 Marshall Plexis. Now these are classic and highly sought after amplifiers because they obviously have that really classic sound and definitely in my mind, that's definitely what you hear is just a, a cranked Marshall. Now when it comes to pedals, it does show that Eddie Van Halen was using an MXR phaser and also an EQ pedal. It also shows that he was using some kind of echo pedal and some other pedals that I'm not too familiar with, but uh, definitely some cool pedals that were popular at the time. So when it comes to guitar cabinets, even though the Marshall labels are not on the cabinets themselves because it looks like Eddie Van Halen preferred the sound of just having the speakers exposed. It does clearly state in the exhibit that they are Marshall 1960A and B cabinets. So the exhibit is actually really cool and I highly encourage anybody who lives in the area to go check it out because it's essentially a recreation of Eddie's rig, including his Variac and several other little things that were included in his rig. So it's a super cool exhibits and it gives us a lot of information when it comes to what was used uh, during that early era of Van Halen which we as guitar players are certainly very big fans of especially if we're into that hard rock kind of cranked plexi sound. What's up guys so when it comes to the gear that I used I actually used my Axe FX3 for this particular tone. Now the reason why I use my Axe FX3 over using the real thing is because I don't personally own a late 60s or early 70s plexi so the best thing i have is my xfx3 so i thought i'd go over a little bit of the settings that i use in my preset so the first thing i would recommend is just putting your drives at 10. i would use the ideal block instead of the authentic because it just gives you more options 
I do have an input boost here on, so it sort of emulates having a marshal that was maybe modded that has a, just a little bit more gain than you would find in a non-modded one. And for base, I have it at around four. Mids at around five, five and a half. In treble, I have it pretty high, maybe higher than um, some of you guys would use because the guitar that I use is my Fender Stratocaster, which has single coil pickups and they're, again, not as hot as humbucker pickups. And also the pickup tends to be a little bit fat sounding. So I have the presence and treble pretty high. And these things are can kind of be modified to taste. And I have the master volume at 10. I think that's very important if you're trying to get to all that power section distortion. So that definitely should be uh, high as well. I think one thing I wanted to highlight is these cool uh, settings here. One is the supply sag. So you can actually turn that up to get a little bit more sag in your sound, which is a classic thing that uh, some of those early plexis give you. And also a variac setting. So I would lower that that kind of just lowers the voltage going into the amplifier I'm assuming if it is working like an actual variac would so I had it at 80% so dropping the power being sent to the amplifier by 20% it does however lower your volume so you may have to adjust your volume settings to uh, not lose a lot of volume when it comes to cab I just use my Van Halen 119 60A cab. I'm pretty sure it's one of my cabs, although I just always rename stuff just to, I guess, know what I use. So I made this preset a while ago, so I don't exactly remember, but I'm pretty sure it is, if I labeled it 1960A, it is a uh, modeled after one of those cabs, which is, again, what uh, Van Halen was using at the time. For phaser, I'm using this Script 90. I'm assuming it's sort of replicating the sound of the classic kind of MXR pedals. And for delay, I'm using analog mono at around 500 milliseconds. And I would say around 15 to 20% is normally what I use for delays. So I have this at around 19. EQ, I'm boosting pretty much every frequency just to give it a little bit extra volume and, and kind of just meanness. And I boosting the mids here to just give it a little bit more bite again this could be adjusted to taste you don't have to exactly do it the way I do it because it really depends on what guitar you're using and the pickups and that kind of stuff and for large sorry for reverb I'm using the uh, large plate I actually kind of like the sound of the large plate reverb on the ActiveX so again this is also a personal taste if you think the different room sounds or the um, or you, I guess you could use like different plugins for reverb because that's definitely a big part of the sound of this first record is the reverb sound so if you think something else sounds better I would certainly recommend using that because you could always get your core sound and then in post or in your DAW use the reverbs there and that's pretty much it for the preset that I created there's a few other extra settings of different blocks you can use. You could add a little bit more drive if you wanted to, to just give um, the tone a little bit more gain. But I think this is enough. I'm maxing out the gain on the amp and then using the input boost. Uh, so let me uh, play for you guys a little bit so you guys can hear what the uh, preset sounds like. <laughs>
So as you guys heard, it definitely has a lot of those characteristics. Definitely some, some good harmonics there that you would hear on a good classic plexi. And it also has a, that, that kind of fullness that you need to hear. It sounds pretty good to me. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a comment and a like. And consider subscribing because we have a lot more of these episodes coming out. So hopefully, guys, we'll see you guys in the next video.